In the early 1900s, there was a very limited understanding in society as to what was meant by child labor and exploitation. Children worked tirelessly in mines, cotton mills, factories, and sweatshops. When a child was severely injured or even killed from their work in the labor force, it was overlooked as this was something normal, a commonality. Countless families were dependent on the money their children would bring in. Parents often advocated for child labor, teaching their children that that was simply the way life was. An 11-year-old boy would say he was 13. A 9-year-old girl would say that she was 12. You can say child labor is sad. You can say children are dying. But if only you could see it. If only there was a way. Closely following the establishment of the National Child Labor Committee, Lewis Heim, an underground photography teacher, was hired by the committee to be their photographer. He was sent around the country to discover and capture children in exploitative situations. Published in newspapers, magazines, displays, and films everywhere, Lewis Hines' photographs worked to capture the truth of child labor in its rawest form. But before we jump into the true impact of Hines' photographs on labor reform, who was Lewis Hine? Lewis Hine was born on September 26, 1874 in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. From a young age, Hine started working due to his father's fatal accident. Eventually, he saved enough money to pursue his college education, studying sociology at the University of Chicago, Columbia University, and New York University. When Hine became a teacher at the Ethical Culture School in New York City, he taught that photography should be used as an educational medium. Eventually, he came to realize that photographs could even be used to spur social change. In 1905, Hines started photographing the thousands of immigrants that arrived at Ellis Island each day. He then moved through the process with the immigrants in their integration into America and photographed the tenements and sweatshops they were forced in. Starting in 1909, the demand for labor grew thus drawing children into the labor force. Hein felt so strongly about the abuse of children as workers that he quit his teaching job and became an investigative photographer for the National Child Labor Committee. Hein believed that if people could see abuses of child labor, they would demand laws to make it come to an end. Eventually, reformers succeeded in forcing legislation at the state level banning child labor and setting maximum hours. Overall, his photographs were integral into bringing about the first child labor laws into the United States. Throughout the extent of his career, Lewis Hine worked tirelessly with the National Child Labor Committee to expose the cruelties of child labor. He captured countless young children just like this young mine driver working at Brown Mine in West Virginia. Taken in 1908, Hein captioned that the young boy had been driving for one year, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day, at the time the photograph was captured. It was used, among many of his other photographs, to expose the inhumane conditions under which children were forced to work. When viewing this photo, one is instantly captivated by the child's young, innocent, and sorrowful facial expressions and the dirt and large wound on his face. This boy is shown at half length, near a work environment, facing toward the photographer and centered. Hein took this photograph to simply display the apparent injustices of it. This 1930s photograph, as we see in our classroom every day, shows a group of construction workers perched on a suspended beam hundreds of feet above in New York City. Rather than depicting the cruelty or dangerous conditions that these workers are subjected to, it shows a sense of solidarity these men have formed in their work together. The men are the main focus of this photograph, as the rest of the background is faded. The contrast in color is what ultimately draws the viewer's eye to the men rather than the city. During their time of rest, they have chosen to gather together and eat, smoke, and laugh with companionship. Although the city skyline is evident in this photograph, it is not the main focus. This photograph, taken in 1911, is captioned Maud and Grade Daily, five and three years old, shrimp pickers, Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. These young children are captured in a more staged, less candid light, but their faces still depict evidently raw emotion. Being of such a young age, these children have no say in the matter of their labor and know of no other life 
than the one they live. Through his photographic technique, Hein captured the girls who are shown in sharp focus, looking directly toward the photographer, while the world around is blurry. This is to show the inherent injustices of child labor in a blurred world of maltreatment. This 1908 photograph, titled The Noon Hour, was taken at an Indianapolis cannery. This photograph really demonstrates the amount of children working. It is possible that this was taken during their break. It illustrates within each individual child that within their need to work, they are also probably forming relationships with the other children with which they work. This photograph is clearly staged, but also portrays a sense of rawness, as it is not overly polished and shows the genuine facial expressions of each child. This next photograph, entitled Newberry Mills Noon Hour, demonstrates the expansiveness of poor labor conditions of children at this time. There are of a range of ages, all packed into a small room. You can see the large machinery of the facility in the background. Hein utilized his technique in his photograph as he shows a group of individuals at about the same distance from the photographer in a work environment. The youngest of his subjects have the sharper focus while the facility and equipment is blurred, yet still purposely in the frame. This enhances his focus on child labor. Titled Child Laborer, this photograph contrasts the perspective of children and the work they had to do. Hein is illustrating how little girls, just like this one, are being forced to work next to this dangerous machinery. By diminishing this little girl to child laborer, he is emphasizing how each individual child was thought of as a worker and not a person or kid. It is so interesting to see how Hein puts her in the center, the subject of the photograph, as she is drowning amongst the industrial world. Aside from the enthralling captions often accompanying Lewis Hines' photographs, he often spoke on child labor in the articles in which his photography was featured. In an article titled, The High Cost of Child Labor, featured in a 1914 edition of Child Labor Bulletin, Hine declared, There is work that profits children, and there is work that brings profit only to employers. The object of employing children is not to train them, but to get high profits from their work. This quotation speaks on child labor directly. He essentially is saying that child labor is used solely for the profits of employers and is of no benefit to the children. This directly relates to his motivation in exposing the cruel and injustice of child labor through photography. Speaking on his motivation to expose child labor in its rawest form, Hein once said, there were two things I wanted to do. I wanted to show the things that had to be corrected. I wanted to show the things that had to be appreciated. This quotation demonstrates the passion Hein had for exposing the injustices of child labor. It also speaks to his motivation and drive to use photojournalism as a way to call out the wrongs in our society. In 1984, a movie was made about the life and work of Lewis Hein called America and Lewis Hein. Granted the Special Jury Prize and Distinguished Feature Awards, the film was advertised to be a moving portrait of one of America's greatest photographers. America and Lewis Hine recognized that Hine's work helped establish child labor legislation and is an important part of our national heritage. Following the premiere of America and Lewis Hine, a film review published in Daily Variety acclaimed that America and Lewis Hine brings him back to life in that period of U.S. history. The film combines an extraordinary selection of Hines' photographs with black and white stock foot from early U.S. social history. Skillfully weaving of these visuals, also of voices and music, guided by intelligent and poetic narration, makes this film a unique character study and social document of a man and his times. Following the premiere of America and Lewis Hine, a New York Times critic, Eleanor Blue, published a film review in 1984 highlighting Lewis Hine. In addition to highlighting the work of Hine, she touched on the film in the exhibition of his life's work in the Empire State Building lobby. She added to a collection of countless articles, memoirs, and films displaying Lewis Hine and his work. Ultimately, Lewis Hine dedicated his life to helping others while simultaneously changing the environment of the workforce. Motivated by the harsh environment surrounding youth maltreatment, he used his photography expertise to capture child labor in its unfiltered form.
Using his gift for the greater good, he shared these photographs in articles and expositions to forever impact the environment within the United States.